Father James Kubicki, and I'm the director of the Apostleship of Prayer, and I'd like to talk to you today about the profound and simple way of life that the Apostleship of Prayer is. And where did this begin? Well, it goes back to the year 1844 to a Jesuit seminary in France. Father Francois Javier Gautrelet was up to here, fed up with the complaining of the Jesuit scholastics, the seminarians in the seminary. Now, what were they complaining about? Well, they had been reading the letters of Jesuit missionaries from India, and these letters inspired them. They wanted to be out in the missions themselves. And there they were stuck in the seminary, studying philosophy, studying theology, studying all these dry academic subjects, when they felt they could be out there saving souls. And so, on December 3rd, 1844, Father Gautrelet gathered the Jesuit seminarians together, and he said, Look, any success on the missions is a spiritual fruit, and it requires spiritual means. Like any fruit, it needs to be watered with spiritual means. Those means are prayers and sacrifices. And so he said, right now, you have those means at your disposal. You can use the prayers and sacrifices that you have right now and offer them as a spiritual means to water the fruit on the mission. He said, don't wait to be an apostle. Be an apostle right now. Be an apostle of prayer. Well, the idea caught on because the Jesuit seminarians now had a way of finding in all their irritations, their frustrations, their impatience, they found a way that they could do something for God, that they could offer up even their frustrations and impatience and that this offering would be a sacrificial offering pleasing to God that would bear fruit on the missions. Well, the idea not only caught on in the Jesuit seminary, but it spread throughout the world. From that little beginning, people came to see that every moment of their lives could be offered to God as a pleasing offering that would bear great spiritual fruit. This is a way of giving purpose and meaning to every moment of our lives. It's a way of using the frustrations and difficulties that we face in life 
And not just enduring them, but using them as an offering, using them for a good work in the world. Why we call this a simple and profound way of life should be obvious to you. It's so simple because we begin each day with an offering of our prayers, works, joys, and sufferings and a little prayer called the morning offering. And then we try to be conscious of that throughout the day, making sure that whatever we're doing is an offering to God. This is a simple way of life, but it will have a profound impact on your life. Thank you. 
of things. And somewhere, in some corner of the world, someone will come to know about Jesus and accept him because of your prayer and sacrifice. The Jesus for us is like this idea that by being offering that four day prayer of one child suffering, they will be becoming missionary. And so, they took it very seriously and their life was changed. Now they started taking interest in their study, in their manual work, in their recreation, in their youth and above all, Saturday, Sunday, when they went for the ministry, they taught these things to the people, simple people in the very place. And these people who before they thought that they cannot be missionary because they cannot leave their home and their family, but they were happy to be cooperators or collaborators of the ministry by spending the things and money. Now they realize they themselves can become real missionaries by morning offering. And so they were very happy. And soon this kind of movement started in every parish. Many people were started reciting in their own way the morning offering. And this started to spread in France, went to Spain, Portugal, Germany, Netherlands, Austria, and practically all of Europe. As a result, you can see here that this movement was gaining ground, and here is the Pope's himself. Yeah, so clear the thirteen. When he became the Pope, he was very aware of this thing going on, and so he adopted it as a peaceful initiative and gave the name Apostleship of Prayer. He started giving one intention for his group to pray. In 1929, Pope Pius XI started giving second intention. So now there are two intentions. I'm sure when the system will be knowing about this, we had a general intention and a missionary intention. This is the genesis of these two intentions that these two both started giving to the people. Now in 2016, Pope Francis made three different changes. First of all, he changed the name from a process of prayer to Pope's Worldwide Prayer Network, PWPS, Pope's Worldwide Prayer Network. Secondly, he changed the name of these two intentions. The general intention came to be called Universal Intention, and the missionary intention came to be called evangelization intention. And instead of giving two intentions per month, he started to give only one intention. But if you see, if you analyze all the twelve intentions of the whole year, half of them are evangelization, half of them are universal. Now, being a good religious, religious and candidate to the religious uh, life, I'm sure you know the intention for January. Do you know the intention? Yes or no? Yes. Because I saw outside on your uh, blackboard, nicely written, the intention of the Holy Father for the month of January. Then, we have the grace to live in full fellowship with our brothers and sisters in other religions, whether they are Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, Jain, Confucian, Taoist, doesn't matter. But we may live in full fraternity with them and pray for them and open to all of them. This is the intention. Now, I 
asking me, what kind of intensity is it? It is evangelization or universal?
the Eucharistic Crusade. And how it came about? In 1910, Pope Pius X, whom we call the Eucharistic Pope, he knew the value of the sacrament of the Eucharist. Till his day, the adult Catholic could receive communion only once in a month. Children never, until they became 14. This Pope changed the rule. He wrote an encyclical called Quam Simulari, in which he said, I encourage every adult Catholic to receive the Holy Communion daily. And the children from the age of reason, that is age of seven, can make their first Holy Communion. What was the purpose? He said, I want a big army of the little ones to pray for my intention and for the peace in this world. I have already four years in advance. You know, in 1914, what happened? Do you know? A great event? The First World War. And already there were signs that the World War is going to happen. And that is why he wanted the children to pray specially for peace. Accordingly, 1914, when the first international, right, in France, International Congress was held at Lourdes in 1914, the delegates there wanted to respect and honor the wishes of the Pope. And they resolved to start another organization for the sake of the children. And accordingly, Father Albert Bessier, a Jesuit, with Sister Genevieve Borsevi, a nun of the St. Protilde, they started Eucharistic Crusade for the age group 5 to 12. Now they gave the name Eucharistic Crusade. Crusade, you know, from the church history, do you know? Crusades are yes. Yes. under the Pope's command, the Catholic kings used to gather their soldiers and go together to fight against the Muslims to take back our holy places. And that involved a lot of violence and bloodshed. And this soldier used to put a big red cross over their dress. That is why they were called crusaders. Now their father and sister gave the name Eucharistic Crusade. We are crusaders, yes, children. But they are Eucharistic Crusade. And I here I wanted to share something which is very personal. I was born in a Jesuit parish in Ahmedabad in Gujarat. And the Spanish Jesuits were working there. They founded the parish. And two Jesuit scholastics from the college, they were coming every Saturday, Sunday, cycling in our parish and they used to stay one night there. Saturday, they used to collect the children. And without our knowledge, we knew that it was Eucharistic Crusade. This is the cross, a plastic, simple plastic cross. I received at the age of seven. It, is, it actually was broken also. I have, <laughs> I have put very quick now. But this is the same cross that I received in 1950. Nine, 61 years ago. And we were putting this one here on our uh, shirt every Saturday during the meeting and on Sunday during the mass. This is a treasure for me because, personally speaking, here lies the seed of my vocation as a priest and as a Jesuit. And I remained there seven years as a member of the Eucharistic Crusade. And when I was leaving the Eucharistic Crusade to become the member of the Sodality of Our Lady, we were given this certificate. It is written in Gujarati, 13th of November 1966, that I was a member of the Eucharistic Crusade. And uh, uh, this is also one of the treasures that I, at the time we were given this black and white sacred art picture also. 
when I entered the Jesuit order at the novice in 1973, a very diminutive French Jesuit from Dindigal came to address us about the morning offering and the Pope's intention, like what I am doing now. And I immediately liked this father because I myself was a Eucharistic crusader from my early childhood. So when I talked with him, he was very happy and he started writing the letters to me. And I have still preserved in my novitiate onward the four letters that he wrote to me, four letters, two are from Dindigal and two are from France, where he went to visit the chapel of St. Margaret Mary Arago, where she received the vision of Sacred Heart of Jesus. And that time he had told me that, brother, one day you will be like me, going around and propagating the devotion to the heart of Jesus. And that is what I have come here to give you, to make aware of the spirituality of the way of the heart. Because our spirituality is Ignatian, but at the same time it is a way of the heart. And any spirituality, whether it is Jesuit, Carmelite, Franciscan, all the spirituality are ecclesial, are universal, and they help us in our spiritual journey. Having said that thing, in 1933, two more sections were added of the age group of 12 to 16. The names are there. And in 1960, a real break came. When we were celebrating the golden jubilee of the encyclical called Singulari of Pius X, Pope John 23rd, he was going to address 3200 delegates at the Vatican. And at that time, he avoided the word crusade and said Eucharistic movement. Why he wanted to avoid this uh, word crusade? Because he was soon going to call Second Vatican Council, which is also called Ecumenical Council of the church. And he was going to invite the people of other religions, including the Muslims, to be the observer for some time. And that is why he avoided the word crusade. Pope, pa Pope Francis added one more word, Eucharistic Youth Movement, and changed the age group from 5 to 25. So now, the name is Eucharistic Youth Movement, which officially we say changed in 1960, but the age has now become increased from 5 to 25, from 2016 onward. PWPN is present in 98 countries with four crore members, and EYM, Eucharistic Youth Movement, is present in 58 countries, and there are 20 lakh children and youth as members. In 2012, there was the first international convention of EYM in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, the capital city, where I also got invitation to represent the whole of Asia. Then we were 210 delegates from 30 countries and mostly young, young people and their animators. And it is there we decided to take St. Teresa of Child Jesus along with Francis Xavier as the patron of the Eucharistic Youth Movement. We also decided on a special day, and our day, EYM Day, is the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, the Corpus Christi, which comes just a little few days before the feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In 1915, from August 4 to 10, 
we had a beautiful celebration of the 100 years of EYM. And there were so many, uh, so many 700 uh, animators and youth were present with hundreds of parents. And in 2019, June, we celebrated the 175th year of the PWPM. Then Pope spent two hours with us. We were 6,000 people in the hall of Pope Paul VI. And he was very, very happy seeing so many people following the spirituality of the way of the heart. And that is where he said, my dear parents, I am very happy that you have come here. But today's parents, I see the trend, they are sending their children even on Saturday and Sunday for tuition, for karate, for music and what not. But they do not send them for the catechism. They are not part of the church in this way. And you are trying, in that way, you are producing and creating the monsters and not the real Christian. I want you to raise your children, not as monsters, but as children of God, real Catholic, real Eucharistic Youth Movement members. It's a beautiful lesson that he gave to those 6,000 people. Okay. On the 27th of March, 2018, Pope raised this uh, PWPN and EYM as pontifical work. Pontifical work. We have pontifical society, four of them. This is the fifth one, but it is not a society. It is a pontifical work. And the offices are in the Vatican now. It's a separate department. And it has become, uh, even the communication, everything now is done from the Vatican. Okay. The way of the heart is inscribed in the dynamic devotion of the heart of Jesus. It's key to the interpretation of our mission, the formation program which draws our heart to be near to the heart of Jesus, to align our hearts with his sentiment, desires, and yearning. The way of the heart helps us to recognize the challenges of the world with the eyes of Jesus, to mobilize us each month, docile to the Holy Spirit for prayer and service. It is thus that the program transforms us daily and deeper into the praying apostle, disciple missionary for a mission. So this is the spirituality of the way of the heart, both EYM and PWPM. Now I would like to go to the spirituality of the PWPM. It is the Ignatian spirituality. If you could, if you could uh, go to the main menu and uh, say spirituality of the. <coughs> it is the nine point spirituality. We all know that Jesuits make their long retreat twice in life. Once as a first year novice, and secondly as a third year novice after their ordination and many years of. Ministry, we call tertiary. Chief. We also make eight day retreat every year. It is Ignatian spirituality. But this way of the heart, spirituality, is meant for everybody, whether they are cardinals, bishops, priests, religious, deacons, lay people, every baptized Catholic can make this kind of retreat and it is called the way of the heart. The spirituality. Yeah. Go ahead. I will tell you where to stop. The bigger one. The first point is in the beginning was love. St. John says, God is love. St. Ignatius says, in the last contemplation, 
to obtain love in the spiritual exercise that love is more shown by shown by deeds rather than words and love is expressed in sharing okay many times we take it for granted i love you i love you when we say we are saying we are really loving but it is not so it is so easy to say i love you no there is a joke about a, a girl who phoned up her boyfriend and said how much do you love me oh i love you very much i can sacrifice anything for you and uh, whatever you want i can give you so very good today evening can you come to this garden to meet me and then the boy looked at the clouds and said there are so many clouds in the sky if it is not raining i will come to meet you <laughs> that means that love was not really love no very easy to say but god is love and when god is we say when god is love god had no option but to share god had to show his love by deeds how did he do he created the whole world and by all he created human beings as in his own image and yes. likeness as a crown of creation all of us that is his love the second point is human hearts restless and needy the human heart restless and needy what does it mean because god has created us there is a vacuum in every heart which can be filled only by god that is why saint augustine has said o oh lord you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you but not everybody realizes this fact that only god can fulfill our life and our heart many people think that if i have lot of money i'll be happy that if i have a good family i have a good bungalow i have a good mobile phone i have a good friend i will be happy many people try to fill that vacuum in their heart through drug through alcohol to sex and through material thing because they don't know that only god can fill this vacuum that is why in order to make them happy people can go to any extent to get what they want what they think can make them happy and that is why our world is broken humanity that brings us to the third point that it is a broken world why because for a small plot of land a son can kill a father or daughter in law and son can throw out a mother who has already written the name in the name of the couple their house how many children in our own india are working in hotels 18 hours factories brick clean and so many other places how many girls are lost into a very bad business every time they are sold how many migrant workers we have seen in the lockdown walking miles and miles to go to their home and now we can see the farmers lakhs of farmers at the border of delhi asking for justice for themselves this world is a broken world you take newspaper and analyze the 10 news on the front page eight will be negative one will be neither bad nor good one will be good every day you can see this trend our humanity is a broken humanity then bring it to the fourth point god sent his son to save us 
in the spiritual exercise of St. Ignatius, there is the contemplation, the first contemplation of the second week called incarnation. And St. Ignatius says, close your eyes and open your inner eyes and see the three divine persons seated on a throne, looking down on earth. What do they see? They see black, brown, white people, children, teenagers, adults, people are on sick bed, people die. Some are fighting, some are in the war, some are very dissatisfied and in depression. And God the Father is asking the question, who will go down to save them? And the second person, the Trinity says, I will go down, Father, to save them. That is the moment of incarnation. And that we know, in his divine wisdom, God had already chosen Mary as the mother of his only begotten son. And that one, Jesus of Nazareth, was born in Galilee. So, Jesus came to save us. God the Father had to sacrifice. Love means sacrifice. Love means giving. And God the Father sacrificed his son as a human being on earth. I can ask you one question. Did Jesus need to be human being to save us? What do you think? Yes or no? Yes. yes. I would say no. Both the answers are okay. Why? In the human logic, human logic, if Jesus is the Son of God, He is the Almighty God, no? He can do anything, no? Every mass we are saying, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Yes. He doesn't need to become human being to save us. He could have done with one word and the whole world till the end of humanity would have been saved. But no. In divine wisdom, he was eager to become human being because we are human beings and we can identify with another human being whom we can see, hear, speak, touch, feel. That is why Jesus became another human being like us in all things except sin. That brings us to the fifth point that Jesus, he calls us his friends. See, Jesus when he came for this work of redemption on earth, once again, I can ask you the question, did he need to choose the twelve apostles for this work of salvation? Yes or no? Again, answer is no. He could do a lot. And yet he chose the twelve apostles to carry out the work of redemption. He wanted them to be co-redeemer with him. He is the only redeemer, yes. But he wanted to share his redeeming work with a human being. And that is why he called the twelve apostles. He chose the seventy-two disciples. And from then on, what the history shows, their successors, whether they are bishops, cardinals, priests, deacons, religious, every baptized Catholic is co-redeemer with Christ. Whenever I go to the seminary or formation house, and today as I stand before you, I am very happy because all of you could have been someone else if you had not come to the religious life of CSFT. And yet, you said yes to Jesus when he called you. Am I right? Yes, I will follow you in this life. I will become co-redeemer with you in this way, Carmelite way, 
in this world. And you have said your fear, your use. This is what Jesus has wrought in our life, calling us his friends and his instrument, his mouth, his body, his feet and his hand in this world. This brings me to the sixth point that he abides in us. It is one thing to be invited by Jesus to be the apostles, to be the co redeemer. It is another thing whether we can really fulfill that mission. On our own, we can do nothing. Our strength, our abilities, our talents are not sufficient enough to be the co redeemer. That is why he abides in us. How does Jesus abide in us? Five different ways. The first one is prayer. Through prayer, Jesus abides in us. That is why in our religious life, in our timetable, when we get up in the morning, we have prayer. We have meditation. A particular place we gather, a particular time we gather, and we learn to pray. What is prayer? It is a conversation with the Lord. Once a journalist who was who had come to interview Mother Teresa said, Mother, early in the morning you spent one hour with your sisters adoring that white host. Again in the evening also you do the same thing. Suppose if you don't do that thing, you will get two more hours to work for the poor. And Mother Teresa said, my dear men, if we don't adore that white host, which is Jesus, we will not be able to recognize Jesus in the poor. Because it is He gives us the ability to recognize Him in our poor and destitute people. And He gives us the strength to serve them. So that is why the religious life, we need to be more active in our prayer life. Because every time we pray, we talk to God in a very special way. We feel the dwelling and the presence of Jesus Christ into our heart. The second way of God's dwelling is the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God, living and active. And every time we read the Word of God, we listen to God, then in a very special way, Jesus is inviting us to make our home in his word. He's telling us, make your home in my word. Very specially, Jesus comes to us. In the prayer, we talk to God. When we read the scripture, God, Jesus is talking to us. The third dwelling of the Lord in our heart is through the sacrament. Very specially, the Eucharistic sacrament. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, I am in him and he in me. Without me you can do nothing. I am the wine, you are the wine. So this Eucharistic sacrament is the one when we consume that body of Christ. That body, that host does not Become us, or we become him. We become another Christ. The fourth dwelling of the Lord in our heart is through community life. Among the Jesuits, 34th general congregation said that community is for mission. Community is for mission. But afterward, we realize that community is not only for mission, but community is mission itself. That is why we corrected and said on the 34th general congregation, community itself is a mission. Because Christianity is not an individual religion. It is a community religion. It is not me and my God. It is me and my brothers and sisters and my God. 
That is when the religious life evolved. If I want to experience God, the highway to God passes through the hearts of all my sisters in the congregation, in my community. Very important to realize. What is actually the opposite word of love is not hate. I don't think we really hate people. Seriously. But it is lack of love. We call indifference. That is the opposite word of love. What happens to my sister in my community? I don't care. That is a big sin. And that is why in our congregation, in our religious life, we are religious. And first and foremost, we have to love one another. For lay people, the dwelling of Jesus is through the small Christian community. That is why all the Christians, all the Catholics are invited. Besides going on Sunday for Mass, they also, one day in the week, gather together in somebody's house and pray the word of God and listen to one another and that way they grow in fellowship with one another. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. That is very important. And the fifth way of God's abiding in us is the works of mercy. 2016 Pope Francis declared year of mercy and we became more aware of the seven corporeal and seven spiritual works of mercy. Jesus himself said, poor will be always with you. Where did he say? In the house of Martha, Mary and Lazarus. He also said in St. Matthew chapter 25, 31 to 46, whatsoever you did to the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. That is why works of mercy, through works of mercy, whenever we are helping the poor people, Jesus in a very special way abides in them and we are serving the poor. That is why Mother Teresa said, we do it for Jesus. Even we are helping the other people, we do it for Jesus. We see Jesus in them and help them. The seventh point is we offer our lives along with Him. <coughs> Remember in the morning we have said our morning offering. Now morning offering, the name is changed now. But Pope has changed the name. We call it daily offering. Why? Daily offering because many people in the world are in a hurry in the morning. Either to go to cook and take the meal with them to prepare their children to go to school, to go for their jobs. And so, whenever you are free, you can recite your morning offering. And this is the morning offering that we say every day. O oh God our Father, I offer you my day. I offer you my prayers, thought, words, action, joy and suffering in union with your son Jesus Christ, who continues to offer himself in the Eucharist for the salvation of the world. May the Holy Spirit who guided Jesus be my guide and strength today, so that I may be blessed to your love. With Mary, the mother of our Lord and of the Church, we pray specially for this much intention as proposed by the Holy Father. So this is the formula. The morning offering. This morning offering is Trinitarian, Father, Son and Holy Spirit is there. It is Marian because it is with Mary's help we are doing it. It is Ecclesian because we are praying for the intention of the Holy Father. So we recite the daily offering followed by the intent of the Holy Father, followed by one hour, Father, Hail Mary and glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. And many congregations have adopted this practice because the Pope wants each and every Catholic to know about his intention and to pray with him. So many bishops have told me, but Father, our people always pray for the Pope. 
and we know every Sunday prayer the faithful, the first it can change your way for the church, the pope, the bishop. Very good. And I said, the Bishop Swami, good. Let me pray for the Pope, for his health, for his works. But what Pope wants us is to pray with him for the intention that he has proposed to the Christian people. That is what he wants. And that is why I am sad to say that I went to 31 major seminaries. Only in two seminaries, the seminarians were aware of the intention of the Holy Father and were praying daily offering and reciting the intention of the Holy Father. 29 seminary, those boys are going to become priests for tomorrow and they didn't even know. And they did not pray for the intention of the Holy Father. And the same situation also is among the religious congregations. And that is why we should correct the course of our uh, direction and we should always uh, cooperate and collaborate with the Pope. Okay, so this is a, uh, whenever we, uh, in the morning we have said our morning offering or daily offering, when we come to the Eucharist, we are one step into concretization of the morning offering. How? What is actually Eucharist? It is nothing else but Jesus telling his Father, I am ready for your will. What is the will of the Father? To die on the cross, no? Mm -hmm. For Jesus it was the will of the Father. And on Holy Thursday, he established the Mass. On Good Friday, he climbed the wood of the cross to fulfill the will of his Father. And every Eucharist, when we are coming there, we are actually concretizing that daily or morning offering with Jesus. That is why the doxology we repeat through him, with him, in him. No? Our sacrifice with Jesus. When we come to receive the communion, what do we say? Body of Christ, Amen. Amen has two meaning. The first meaning is dogmatic. I believe that Jesus is present in this post. Very nice. The second meaning is important. What is the second meaning? As I am about to receive the communion, I must tell Jesus, Jesus, you gave your body to be broken on the cross. And you shed your blood on the cross. As I receive, I commit also myself to do likewise. To let my body be broken and to let my blood be shared for my brothers and sisters. Concretely for my community. Concretely for the children whom I teach. Concretely for the patients that I attend to. Concretely for the poor people whom I serve. This is the way that I really concretize the daily offering. And the mass becomes not only a ritual, but it is my sacrifice, my daily offering with Jesus to the Father. That is why the priest should not say, go the mass is ended. But he should say, go the mass has just begun. Because the real mass begins when we are out of the chapel. That is important. We have to realize the whole day, my whole day is a mass with Jesus, because Jesus I am carrying into my heart. This brings to the eighth point of our spirituality, and that is a mission of compassion. Jesus was a man of compassion. Wherever there was a sickness, he healed. Wherever there were people oppressed by the evil spirit, he released them. Even we have seen three instances when people were dead, he brought them to life. Lazarus, that young man of nine, and that Jairus' uh, daughter. Holy Father, the Pope, is the visible head of the church. He is the representative of Jesus. And he too shares in the ministry of the compassion of Jesus. And that is why whenever he proposes 
an intention for us to pray. He is actually inviting us to participate in the compassionate ministry of Christ. That is why he is citing the Pope's intention is nothing else but our participation in the compassionate ministry of Jesus. Pope, as a chief shepherd of the church, knows which part of the world needs our special prayer and which need of the church has to be met urgently. And that is why he proposes the intention. Now, Pope does not write all this intention by himself. He is asking us, many people. And just the last, uh, last October, I sent three uh, universal and three evangelization uh, intention to the Pope for 2022. And now, next month, already he has chosen which will be published very soon in the beginning of February. So, he is taking the opinion of so many people in the world for what we should pray, for whom we should pray. That is why our bounden duty is to pray for the Pope's intention. And the last point of our spirituality is a worldwide network of prayer. Attentive to the needs of the humanity. <coughs> there are 4 crore people, <coughs> PWPN member, 20 lakh youth and children. <coughs> Every one of them, when they pray, <coughs> every day, for the same intention, prayer can work miracle. A great synergy is produced and cries for the answer from God the Father. And so we, I hope I also may now count all of you. I hope I may count all, all of you now as member of the PWPM. Will you pray for the Pope's intention? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> okay. So this is the nine point spirituality that uh, <coughs> go to the spirituality of the event. I told you at the age of seven I became the Eucharistic Crusader and we were given four weapons. Okay. The first weapon was prayer. Small children, small prayer. So what we used to say, Sacred Lord of Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, pray for me. Saint Joseph, pray for me. Like that, you know, small small. And every day we were told, please write down how many times you prayed this kind of short, short prayer for the conversion of the sinners. The second weapon was given to us was Holy Communion. When we received our first Holy Communion, I received at the age of eight, our parish priest told us, now all the Eucharistic Crusaders should come every day for Mass. So I still remember, six o'clock in the morning, me and my brother and two neighborly, neighborly boys wish to run to Jesuit brother, knock at his door and say, brother, get up and ring the bell. And as soon as he had opened the sacristy, we used to go and fight for the clothes of the altar boys. And sometimes even we used to hide so that no other people may not know where it is kept. But at the end of the week on Saturday, we were supposed to write down how many communion we had received during the week for the conversion of the sinners. The third weapon was sacrifice. Small children, small sacrifice. Somebody has given me a chocolate, I would like to eat all by myself. But now we are told, no, share it with somebody else. Somebody in the class has forgotten to bring the pencil, give your pencil when you have to. At home, mother has prepared with a god, you know. I don't know what you call it, but we call Karela in Gujarati, in Hindi also, no? Yeah. And whenever my mother used to prepare Karela, we used to say, why are you to prepare this thing? You know, we used to fight with her. Now, we were told, when mother prepares bitter God, take a spoonful and say, Jesus, for the sake of your love, I eat Karela. And without complaining, we do eat Karela, you know. So this is the way small, small sacrifice Right, every day, how many sacrifices you made for the conversion of the sinners. And the last weapon was 
missionary, to be missionary, apostolic. When we were small, we were given a magazine called Soldier of God. Soldier of God. Okay. In uh, uh, what do you call? In Gujarat, we call uh, Christ Raja or uh, Konkani Jasuraya. In Hindi, Kusvi. You know, different languages. Okay. And probably in Hindi speaking people must have seen Kusvi also. No? It is very pictorial magazine for children, very, very much. And we were given 10. One we could keep, nine we had to sell the non Catholic people with a prayer that they may read and become converted to Christ. And in our time, we used to sell it for one ana. Six ana, six paisa was one ana, and 16 ana was one rupee in our time. So it's a big, big sacrifice for people who are buying this one now. But this is the apostolate that we were doing at that time. Now here, if you go, <clears throat> yeah, very good. In this uh, new recreated EYM, we have only three weapons. But we don't call it weapon anymore. We call them as three pillars. So go ahead, Father. Again, it is called way of the heart. First one is, instead of prayer, we now invite the children to inculcate in them the habit of reading the gospel. Because the children are now invited to become the friend with Jesus. You cannot be a friend with Jesus unless you know him, no? And where do you know him? In the gospel. Saint Jerome said, ignorance of the scripture is the ignorance of Christ. So we ask the children every day to read from the gospel. And then pray again. The word of God, to listen to him, to see him, a prayer. Okay, go ahead. In that also we say, you have the daily offering. The second one is Eucharist. Not only Holy Communion, but the whole rite of Holy Eucharist. It's very important. So we teach them different parts of the Eucharist and love to be uh, participating in the full mass. Go ahead. The mission. Not apostolate now, we have given the new name called the mission. And this mission is the heart of the, to share the life and mission of Jesus as church. Go ahead. Serving the justice of the kingdom, a mission of compassion for the world. And how do we recognize? Praying daily for the intent of the Holy Father. Then we also tell the children to pray for the sick in their homes, to go for hospital visitation, to contribute something for the poor students. Different way, with not only prayer, but also the deeds of love through which they can do the mission of Christ. Okay, so that is the problem. You can close down. And then the last thing that I would like to. Are you tired? No. The last thing I would like to show you is the uh, steps of recreation. Steps of recreation. <clears throat> <coughs> See, I was telling you about uh, go ahead. This is the card that Saint Teresa of Child Jesus got when she was admitted in the the apostleship of prayer. Go ahead. Yes, here it is. In various countries, we have different logos and symbols of apostles for prayer and Eucharistic crusade. What is right afterward now? Yeah, this one. This is the logo we chose in Argentina. And I will give you the explanation now. Go ahead. 
for different continent, for different countries, go ahead. Here it is. I already have told you about the contemplation of incarnation. No? Just I would like to put in the, the downward. Therefore, the world in the logo represents a worldwide network of prayer and it concerns for the challenges of facing humanity and mission of the church. So what is the mission? The whole world is our mission. That is why we put the, in the logo, the whole earth. Go ahead. The second one is the heart of Jesus. It's the red line. No? Red line. Because it is the spirituality of the way of the heart. What does it signify? Availability and readiness like Christ to the Father for his mission. So, heart of, here thus represents the way of the heart which leads to availability for the mission of Jesus in our daily life. And the third one is the <clears throat> apostleship of prayer. Here we have small cross. In, it will be changing the place. If it is on India, it will be on India. If it will be Africa, it will be Africa. Different continent, different countries. What does it signify? In the center of the logo, the continent or the country represents the commitment to the local Ecclesia reality. So we think globally, but we act locally. That is our mission. Okay, go ahead, Father. Okay, the Pope video. In 2016, we came out with Pope video. Every month, the Pope speaks for one and a half minute in Spanish. And the subtitles are in 18 different languages, including English and Hindi. Hindi we started just three months ago. Okay. The Pope is explaining why he has taken this intention and how we can uh, really put it into practice. The Pope video. In your computer, you just, in the Google you go and just write the Pope video, it will come. Every month it is uh, the new intention, the new uh, video you will find. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, I'll, I'll tell you now. Go ahead. Another one is Click to Pray. In 2016, we created an app called Click to Pray. Okay, Click to Pray. Go ahead. Yeah. This is the symbol. You go to your app store or play store in your mobile and just write click to pray and you can download and register in your name. What you will find there, you will find the Pope's intention, the daily offering, the three special prayer with Jesus in the morning, with Jesus at noon, with Jesus at night. You will also find a prayer wall where you can write your congregation or your own personal intention. At the end of the day you can see how many people in the world were praying for your intention. And go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. I just wanted to show you one thing. Uh, yeah. Here, yeah, this one. Can you? Huh. You can see here Father Fornos, International Director, with the tablet, tablet of uh, not fever or cold, uh, but tablet of the of the Holy Father. <laughs> Pope on the 20th of January 2019, World Communication Sunday. Every Sunday he appears for the second window. And there are thousands of people down in the Vatican Square listening to him. On that day, he called for the foreigners with his tablet and he explained to them what is Click to Pray app. And he says, today I am going to become the member of the Click to Pray. And you also download this app and pray with me for my intention. The next day, he went to Poland for the uh, World Youth Day. And he recommended all the youth also to download, click to pray, and pray with him for his intention. Okay, close down. Now you just
this is January intention. So I just wanted to show you the sample of the intention that uh, uh, Pope video is Rezar a Dios siguiendo a Jesús, nos unimos como hermanos con los que rezan siguiendo otras culturas, otras tradiciones y otras creencias. Somos hermanos que oramos. La fraternidad nos lleva a abrirnos al Padre de todos y a ver en el otro un hermano, una hermana, para compartir la vida, para sostenerse mutuamente, para amar, para conocer. La Iglesia valora la acción de Dios y en las demás religiones, sin olvidar que para nosotros cristianos la fuente de la dignidad humana y de la fraternidad está en el Evangelio de Jesucristo. Los creyentes debemos volver a nuestras fuentes y concentrarnos en lo que es esencial, lo que es esencial de nuestra fe, la adoración a Dios y el amor al prójimo. Decimos para que el Señor nos dé la gracia de vivir en plena fraternidad con los hermanos y hermanas de otra religión, donde peleamos, y rezando unos por otros, abriéndonos a todos. Since you are Carmelites, you would love to see uh, about uh, St. Teresa of Child Jesus. Okay, because that is the, the what you call heart of our mission now. Um, the, her little way is nothing else but the way of the heart. Hello, I'm Father James Kabicki. St. Francis Xavier, the great missionary Jesuit saint, on whose feast day the Apostleship of Prayer was founded in 1844, and St. Therese of Lisieux, also known as the Little Flower, are the two patron saints of the Apostleship of Prayer. Now, it's clear why St. Francis Xavier is a patron saint. Our organization was founded on his feast day. But why was St. Therese chosen to be the co-patron of the Apostleship of Prayer. Well, very simply, she was an early member of the Apostleship of Prayer. Now, we didn't know that until just recently, tucked away in the archives of the Carmelite convent in Lisieux, France, was discovered her original enrollment form as an Apostle of Prayer. It was dated October 15, 1885, and it was signed by Therese Martin herself when she was 12 years old. She must have entered the Carmelite convent carrying this certificate with her. It meant something to her. And I can't help thinking that what has come to be known as the little way of St. Therese really came out of the spirituality of the apostleship of prayer. Her little way was not to do big things for God, but to do everything as an act of love for God. That's what we strive to do every day in our daily or morning offering. Every day we offer ourselves all our prayers, works, joys, and sufferings to God as an act of love for Him. In her last autobiographical notes, dated June and July 1897, St. Therese wrote the following, I desire to be a daughter of the Church and to pray according to the intentions of our Holy Father the Pope realizing that they embrace the whole universe. That is the general aim of my life. And that is the general aim of each of our lives, to be daughters and sons of the church. Saint Therese, saint of the little way, co-patron of the apostleship of prayer, pray for us. Do you have any uh, question, any clarification to be sought?
This means two things. No? Either you have understood everything, <laughs> which is the one, first one or second one. <laughs> I hope you understood everything, okay? And uh, I hope that uh, this little exposition to the spirituality of the way of the heart, which comprises of three things, no? Of the daily offerings, the intention of the uh, Holy Father, and the spirituality of the heart, sacred heart of Jesus. Uh, many people uh, ask me, Father, is it possible? I mean, already the, we have the devotion to the divine mercy. And how come that now we, nobody remembers about the heart of Jesus? It is not necessary. They are, they are not in competition, actually. The fire of God's love, when God died in the 16th century, Jesus appeared to Margaret Mary Arako and established the devotion to the heart of Jesus. But once again, we are human beings, fickle minded, and once again, when the heart, our hearts were becoming very, uh, what do you call, fickle, once again, cold to God's love, Jesus chose Maria Faustina and she, he propagated the devotion to the divine mercy. Both are the same. It's a progression of nothing else. But the way we live, is the way of the heart. That is why uh, wherever we are, whichever ministry we are doing, we always uh, propagate the devotion to the heart of Jesus and especially the consecration to the heart of Jesus every first Friday of the month in your community. And also every Friday you can, it is I, I may say Mass of the heart of Jesus every Friday. And that way we can always uh, it is not the picture or uh, statue that is important, but it's the way we live like Jesus in readiness and availability for the mission of the church, mission of the Father, that is very important. Okay. This, whatever I have preached today, everything is copied here on your computer. You can see there are many other videos. Secondly, I have brought, how many communities there are here? Three, no? Here three communities are here, yes. postulant, yes. novices and the yes. sisters. So I have brought three sets of material. Okay, so kindly uh, come and take it. Unaware 
of the meaning and significance of this apostle ship of God. I in particular did not realize that this prayer addresses the challenges facing the humanity and also assists in the mission of the church. And these challenges are identified by the Pope and they are key, they are the keys for our prayer. You have explained to us so beautifully and clearly the way of the heart. This spirituality, how it draws us nearer to the heart of God heart of Jesus, how it helps us to see the challenges with the eyes of Christ, and how it mobilizes us for prayer and service, as well as how it helps to transform us and enables us to be praying apostles and missionaries for the mission of the compassion of the world. Thank you very much, dear Father, for giving us this valuable uh, prayer, prayer of the day. May God enable you to reach out to many, many people. Thank you, Sister Chris and the team, for giving us this golden opportunity to learn about this prayer by inviting Father Doug. I thank Mr. Suraj, who has been with us for this long time, to assist us to live stream this program to the whole institute this evening. Thank you once again, and thank you one and all.